Hi, my name is Belle Tergoy and I'm the president of SAI. And I'm glad to be here tonight to share with you how we have been able to achieve international success and political impact through campaigning. And SAI is an organization that works both with long-term development cooperation, but also with advocacy. And I think what has been our biggest advantage and also what makes us unique is that we are both a professional aid organization but also an international solidarity movement of students and academics. And throughout the years we have been attempting, failing and succeeding. But we have been able to come up with our own recipe for how to do campaigning. Since the 90s we have been engaged in challenging one-sided and unnuanced aid communication with the use of stereotypes and oversimplifications. Western media and fundraising organizations tend to present only famine, hunger and war and deepen, and deepen the divide between us and them. Radiate is one of our annual campaigns and it all started by creating a satirical video called Africa for Norway. We turned the tables and played on stereotypes that we found in charity appeals but this time we portrayed freezing Norwegians in desperate need of help from kind Africans who wanted to donate radiators to us. And for this, we managed to receive massive international media attention. So then we had to figure out what to do next. And that's when we launched the Radiate Awards. We engaged the public directly by giving them the chance to nominate the best and the worst fundraising ad of the year, and also giving them the chance to vote. And for this, we have been labeled an international aid watchdog by international media outlets. And we have been able to create long-lasting change in the aid sector. A recent example is that last year, the British NGO Comic Relief won one of our awards and decided to ditch the use of white saviors for their charity appeal with Ed Sheeran. In 2013, we wanted to highlight how the rights of indigenous people were violated by investments by the Norwegian oil fund. So we wanted to influence both the Norwegian bank, but also Norwegian decision makers. And how we did that was to create a fake ad. We pretended to be the Norwegian bank. And we used the slogan, where others see only jungle, we see profit. So we bought an ad space for our fake ad and sent it to the largest newspaper. And then we also carried out different stunts at career days where the Norwegian bank was active in recruiting students. I was a student at that time and was part of the stunt, dressed up business-like, handed out reports and also tried to get students to join me in destroying the rainforest and violating indigenous people's rights. And the real Norwegian bank, they called us out and they decided to throw us out from the career day. Uh, but this got the attention from the director of the Norwegian bank which later called us in for a meeting to discuss our political campaign targets. And that led, eventually, but also support from politicians for us being able to get a policy, an expectation, expectation policy document on human rights adopted in the parliament. Students play an important and critical role as human rights defenders, and they're often attempted silenced by authoritarian regimes for criticizing injustice and also for calling out for more democracy and human rights. And we witnessed a huge increase in attacks on higher education. And that's when we decided to make this poster with the heading, Beware the Educated. The poster illustrates famous or well-known dictators who are all fearing students. The Iranian embassy to Norway requested us to remove this poster because it's featuring Ayatollah Khomeini amongst famous dictators such as Stalin and Hitler. But instead of aligning to this demand, we decided to go to the national media and tell them that Iran was trying to oppress Norwegian students and our freedom of speech. And we decided to launch an own scheme that is called Students at Risk, which is a program for students who are facing risk due to their political engagement for human rights and democracy. So in addition to raising awareness, we also spent a lot of time on alliance building and managed to get the Norwegian parliament to adopt this scheme in 2013 and has been running since 2015, being able to create a safe haven for student activists. Another campaign we had was that we wanted to raise awareness about the last colony in Africa, Western Sahara, which has been forgotten by many and also neglected by the international community. 
We supported the Sahrawi people and their right to a fair and free referendum. And we had several campaigns about Western Sahara before, so it was hard to come up with a new angle. But in the end, we decided to launch our own prize, which was called the Police Prize, which was awarded to the Norwegian Prime Minister, Anna Solberg, and playing into Norway's global image as a peace nation. But this didn't really go that well. But we also sent a mega delegation to Western Sahara with a lot of Norwegians. And here, one of the activists found out that we should do a stunt using a blue finger and having a hashtag that says referendum now. And it was, it turned out to be the hugest success of the campaign. And it was very effective, very symbolic, showing how you get blue ink on your finger after casting a ballot in an election. And the hashtag referendum now has been shared over 250,000 times in social media. I managed to create huge attention about a lost, about the forgotten conflict. So, to sum up, what is a recipe? Well, use of humor and satire. It can be, in many ways, a two-edged sword, and it's hard to know if you succeed or not. But if you do succeed, the results are tremendous, as we have seen with our Radiate campaign. And use political edge. Dare to be bold and to be untraditional, like we have been with our Students at Risk campaign. And also, dare to take a detour. When we pretended to be the Norwegian bank, it wasn't that straightforward, but at the same time, it led to political impact. And be open for new ideas. With our Western Sahara campaign, the police prize that we planned failed, but then we ended up with the blue finger stunt, which was a huge success. Thank you so much. Thank you.